Hey guys, GWS here. Here to give some thoughts on this whole Charlottesville incident. And to me, it just... It represents the sadness of what I've been talking about. And how this this powder keg is blowing. And it didn't just blow at Charlottesville. Anybody who's on the left watching this... Um, welcome to the party, I guess. Because these protests, Antifa, BLM, and yes, even the white nationalists and patriots and all that, you know, this has been going on for ever since Trump was elected. They took to the streets, start chanting, not my president. And before that, when you have Black Lives Matter chanting for dead cops, in the streets of New York, and it's just, it's, I, I'm not even pointing fingers at any of this, but here's what I'm saying, is, we've had this problem, hell, I don't know, especially it blew up with the whole Ferguson deal, this whole division of the country, there's, there's something I want to clear up, though. Everybody wants to get on to Donald Trump for his responses, and keep in mind, Donald Trump says some stupid shit. Let's get this out of the way. He says dumb stuff that is factually inaccurate all the time, and he does need to clear that up a little bit. Granted, he's on Twitter, he's, he doesn't have a filter through his Twitter, but... You know, it could be cleaned up. Like, he, he could, you know, be a little bit more careful with what he posts. But everyone's getting on to him for his message because he's not using specific words. Well, let's go over what he does say. You know, he, here's some, like, like loading and, you know, so, you know that doesn't really mean much. Um, you know, we're just going to go through his Twitter just to see how he kind of reacts. The DOJ is opening a civil rights investigation on the car attack in Charlottesville. Axios.com. And Donald Trump retweeted this. Now, if Donald Trump did not care about civil rights, why would he be retweeting this? This is on his time. This isn't his PR team doing this. Let me make sure I'm running. Yep, I'm running. This is not his PR team. That's something he looked up and he retweeted for everybody. Because he wants to know, yes, when it happens on the right, he does care too. He's been yelling about this for the whole time. You guys don't listen. More credibility, never felt safer. You know, a lot of gloating and, gloating and stuff. Our thoughts and prayers with the families. Friends and colleagues of Virginia's VS Pro Lieutenant Colin and um, whatever that is Bates. Yeah, I don't know what TPR means. <laughs> Excuse my ignorance. Condolences to the family of the young woman killed today, and best regards to all those injured in Charlottesville, Virginia. So sad. Now notice what he's focusing on here: uh, the family. The family of the young woman killed today. That is his first tweet. And then the families of the officers. And provide whatever assistance is needed. We are ready, willing, and able. This is somebody who is saying, you know, we are going to provide whatever help is needed to Charlottesville. Because they declared a state of emergency and he... Um, was responding to that. No matter what our color, creed, religion, or party, we are all Americans first. And that's important. That is a message of uniting. Swift restoration of law and order in the protection of innocent lives. Why, was the, why do these mayors keep issuing stand-down orders on these protests? If you see somebody engaging in violent behavior, that person has to be arrested. And if the protest becomes violent, 
and it cannot be controlled. It has to be broken up. Bedminster, New Jersey. Okay, this is all before that, I think. So, Trump is focusing on uniting the country, not finger-pointing. See, here's the thing. The left wants the focus to be on finger-pointing. Point out the right nationalists. Point, tell, you know, call out their names. All right. Let's call everybody out by name. Left and right. This isn't just a right-wing thing. It's like I said, welcome to the party. I'm glad you finally arrived. Now can we all, everybody, left and right, even the fucking alt-right that won't even denounce this. Let's all denounce all violence. No touching. That is what politics is. Keep your hands off of each other. If you cannot argue your point through nuance, through the convictions, through your principles, through your rhetoric, you know, through your skills, then get the fuck out of politics. All sides. Every damn one of you. You know, I don't care. You know, people talk about words, being offended. And this is left and right. This isn't just left-wing SJW snowflakes. No, this is all sides. Everybody. If you are offended by words and arguments and you cannot properly refute them, then like I said, get out. You don't belong there. That doesn't mean guns or fists or cars or sticks or what have you. That's what politics is. Debate nonviolent. You know, I'll debate anybody till the cows come home, and yes, it may devolve into some name calling. You know, that's just how it happens on the internet. But you know what? At the end of the day, I'm still going to wish the best for you. If I saw you in trouble on the side of the road, I'd still come and help you. Because when it comes to humanity, it doesn't matter what your political leanings are. Everybody is a human first. This whole thing just... It makes me sick how all sides are responding to it. You know, and, and I just want to say this to the alt-right, right-wingers in general. Antifa is a huge problem. Yes, exactly. I will agree. Most of the violence comes from the left. I agree. But here's your problem. It's easy to play the victim. Easy. That's the easy part, being the victim. It's a lot harder when you got to turn around and you have to denounce what you stand for, your own side, for the things they do wrong. So, if you're really principled, if any side is really principled, they'll turn around, they'll look at themselves, they'll look at their neighbors and say, you're wrong when that kind of activity goes on. Thanks for listening. God bless.